Happy Wednesday. How you doing? Hey, we're talking about angels. Today, I want to tell you the story of an angel who saved my life. This is an incredible story. And it's one, I sometimes get a little emotional when I even think about it. It's, it's huge. I want to share, I want to share, and I don't talk about this very often. A lot of people who know me have never heard this, but I'm going to share this with my partners. I don't know that I've even told our church about it. Maybe some people have heard, I don't know, but I'm going to share it with you today about my experience, my personal experience with an angel who saved my life. Incredible story. Say this with me on this happy Wednesday. And today's a happy Wednesday. I'm happy to be here. That's why I tell people every every time, every Sunday morning, I'll say, are you glad to be here today? And then I always say, I'm glad to be anywhere. I am glad to be anywhere, folks. I'm thankful to God for being here right now because I'm fulfilling my purpose. The devil tried to cut my purpose short and it didn't work. And it's not going to work ever because I will not leave this earth one second before God calls me home. Not one second. I mean to tell you, not one second. I will never let the devil kill me. Amen. With anything, sickness, disease, nothing. Glory to God. Say this with me today. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart and getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Everything always works out for me. Glory to God, huh? Share this video with everybody you know. If you're watching this in our Facebook group, and a lot of people do, hit the invite button at the top. Invite all your friends. Because we... We're, we, I just want to get people blessed, but they got to find these videos before they call me usually or tell them to call me. If you know people are sick and broke, tell them to call me. We get results. This is the probably the most result-oriented ministry in the country. Most people, these preachers, bless their hearts, they just stand up there and preach. They don't think about changing lives. They don't think about getting people healed getting people delivered from poverty into abundance. And I do every second of my life, I think about that. And I think about getting the blessing of God on people. I want God's people to be blessed, just like God does. God takes pleasure in your prosperity, the Bible tells us in Psalm 38, verse 25, or verse 20, Psalm 35, verse 27, I think it is. God takes pleasure in our prosperity. And I want to give God pleasure. And the more people I move into abundance and good health, the more pleasure God gets. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm all about. It's my whole life is centered on that. And that's all I want to do is get God's people blessed. Hallelujah, huh? Glory to God. Go to on YouTube. Tell everybody you know to go to our videos. If you do your tithes and offerings today, Call me so I can speak the blessing over you. The word for word blessing. Amen. If you just need prayers answered, call. I'm always ready to get people's prayers answered for them. I've been doing this for 30 years, over 30 years. I've been getting results. I'm all about results. I don't just pray with people. I mean business. And I intend for you to get your prayers answered. Years ago, when, when we were in uh, Bible college, there was a man there. He was actually the dean of students. His name was Brian McCallum. He's with the Lord now. He was an Air Force test pilot. He flew out there in uh, New Mexico, out there in that area, where they were testing the jets when they first started with these jet airplanes, breaking the sound barrier and things like that. He was part of that. Chuck Yeager was the one who got all the attention. But Brian McCallum was one of them. And he was out there. Now, 
he is, and then he got hired after he retired from the Air Force, he got hired by Brother Hagen to be his pilot, to fly him around the country. And so he got to know Brother Hagen and sat and listened and listened and listened to all the teaching and everything uh, over the years. And then he started to teach at Rama when they formed Rama, and he became the Dean of Students. And he was a wonderful, wonderful man. And I had some personal interaction with him, and I am here to tell you, he was a wonderful, wonderful person. So I just praise God that I, I had the honor to even speak with him. And he, he was teaching one of our classes one time. I think he came in uh, because our normal instructor was out or something like that. But he came in and, he, and he, he taught our class one day and he started talking about angels. And he told this story about how when he was in an airplane doing it, they, they see what, when they were trying to break the sound bear, the only way, you know, you, and I fly airplanes, so I know how this works. You get more speed going down. If you want to, if you want to try to break speed bar uh, barriers and and uh, and records, you're going to point the airplane down because that's where you get the greatest speed. <clears throat> when I fly toward an airplane, an airport, if I'm flying at uh, five thousand five hundred feet, and I start to approach that airport, when I'm about twenty twenty five miles out. Uh, in a small plane, I will pull the power back and put the nose down. And the airplane will go down slow because I pulled the power back. Well, if I kept the power, the normal cruising power and pointed the nose down, that airplane would pick up a lot of speed. So in order to keep the speed under control, I pull the power back and put the carb heat on so we don't pick up any ice. And uh, there's, there's procedures for all that. Well, when they were trying to break the record in those jets, they would point the plane down and put the full power and they would break the sound barrier. Well, one time he did that and the stick went forward, he couldn't pull it back. He couldn't get the stick pulled back. It was somehow locked up and he was in a dive and he, and of course, the dive starts at like 30,000 feet. So he's got time. And he, he could not get the stick pulled back. And he knew. He was, and he was going uh, over 1,000, 1,500 miles an hour. You can't eject at that speed. You just get crushed if you try to. And he knew he couldn't eject. So he knew he was not going to make it. And, that, and they lost a lot of pilots in those tests. He passed out. And when he woke up, he was looking up and all he saw was blue sky. That airplane was pointed up. It was going up and the stick was loose. And he pulled the power back, got the plane under control and went in and landed. An angel had taken that plane and pointed it up. And when he told that story, I just shuddered because I realized what had happened to me. I was swimming with my friends. I was stationed down at Randolph. That's where I did my flight training. And Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio. And we had gone swimming up on the Guadalupe River. And there was an old dam up there where the water went across the dam and people would swim there and jump off the dam down into the water. And somebody I worked with said to me, be careful up there because that's where a lot of people drowned. And I said, oh, well, we went up and jumped off. Well, one day, a couple of weeks after that, we were up there in the summer and I jumped off the dam and went down in the water and I got caught in the backwash. Because when the water comes over a dam, it forms a thing and, a, and it starts to spin backwards. I got caught in it. And he told me a lot of people drowned right there. And they do. I just Googled it. There's a, a lot of people drowned on the Guadalupe River. And that's where they drowned is right there at that dam. 
And I was going around, and every time I'd go around, bang, I hit the... I'd hit the bottom of the river. Bang, bang, bang. I could not get out. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is where everybody drowns. And it was. I was right in the same spot as where everybody drowned. And I couldn't get out. And I knew I couldn't get out. I was stuck. And the first thing I thought was, what is my mother going to think? My mother, who had raised us two boys by herself, was sitting at home in Pennsylvania. And I thought, oh, what is my mother going to think? She's going to be heartbroken. Then I thought to myself, it's going to be so strange with my friends driving back to San Antonio without me. Because I'm not going back with them. And there I am. Bang, bang, bang. And finally, I just, everything got dark. I woke up on top of the water, being held up in the water. My head was being, I was held up and my head was out of the water. And I was able to start breathing. And my friends, and I was down, down a ways. And my friends were all on shore yelling and screaming because they saw me jump in and I didn't come up. And they swam out and got me because I couldn't move. I couldn't swim. I couldn't do nothing. And they got me and they brought me in. And I was okay. And I never realized, because I never realized until Dean McCallum told his story that an angel had pulled me out of that water. And the Lord just dropped it in my spirit when he told that story and said, that's what happened to you. Oh, it just, I was sitting there in my seat with all the other students and I just, I couldn't breathe. I just, I sat there when I realized that God had sent his angel to pull me out of that water. To save my life. Otherwise, I would have died as a young man. And I would have never, I'm telling you what, folks, when God has a purpose for your life, nothing will stop that purpose. He will do whatever it takes. I was not even saved. I wasn't saved. I was as lost as lost. I would have gone to hell if I'd have died there. I would be in hell at this very minute if that angel had not pulled me out of there. But instead of being in hell, instead of being in hell, I'm here, getting people saved, healed, and delivered, and preaching God's word to anybody who will listen to it. Glory to God. If you've had an experience with angels like that, go on my Facebook group and 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 put write your story. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a note on there today for anybody to make comments and fill it out. Share these stories with other people. Your story, if you have a, have a story, and I'll, I know I'm not the only one this has ever happened to. It's happened to a lot of people that they've been saved by angels or even helped when you know it's an angel that helped you. I'll, I'll put uh, an invite on, uh, on my Facebook page for anybody who's ever had angels Help them. Glory to God. huh? Or you can text me your story and I'll post it. Glory to God. huh? Hey, call me today if you need prayers answered. Call me today if you just want to share your story about angels. Glory to God. But I'd rather have you share it on Facebook so everybody can see it. Amen. Call me when you do your offerings and donations. Tell everybody about these videos. I am determined you are going to live a curse-free, blessed life. And I will use the power in the name of Jesus to make it happen.